Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today we have an all new review and wear test of the new Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Lift and Flex Concealer. So I'm really excited about this one. I have been really getting into Danessa Myrick's products recently and I really, really love her serum skin tint. So I was really excited to see this come out as well. So this is currently available on Sephora, which is where I ordered mine and this retails for 30 US dollars or $40.50 Canadian. This also has a 12 month shelf life and is made in China. So this describes itself as a medium to full coverage, skin loving, all over face concealer packed with nine plant powered ingredients plus hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. It says it also has caffeine and it says you can apply with a brush, sponge or your finger. And this is what the inner packaging looks like. It is really cute little component. And I picked up shade one. Looking at it now, I think I could have gone with shade two, which is the shade I am in the skin tint. So this does say you can use it on your eyes and all over the face instead, which you can with most concealers, but I won't with this one because it is going to be too light. So it does have a little doe foot on this one and it's kind of got that more scoop shape toward the end here. So can you see it has that sort of more scoop shape to it? So that will allow you to get into those smaller areas, but also not pick up too much product at once. So I am excited to try this one out. So let me zoom you in. I will put this on the face, do the rest of my makeup, go about my day. I'll try to do a midday check-in as well and then I will be wearing this for about 12 hours. It is currently about 6.30. So I actually am filming this quite early in the morning. I am filming this before work because it's a Friday and I wanted to film this video on a Saturday, but I do want to step outside and show you what it looks like in natural lighting and tomorrow is supposed to be rainy and miserable all day. So I thought today would be our best bet, but let me zoom you in. We'll get to putting this on the face and then we can get the wear test started. All right, so let's get to putting this on the face. Like I said, I'm not gonna be using this all over because it is a bit too light, I think. So I'm just going to apply this right, ooh. <laughs> that is really, really light. Okay, I definitely should have gone with shade two, but that's okay. This is supposed to be full coverage, but also hydrating. And I found that two dips was more than enough to get me this much product. I am going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush. I've been really loving this for concealer. I still love the BK Beauty A506, but I like this one because it is smaller. So it allows me to kind of get the under eye area a little bit easier. It's actually feeling quite silky as I blend it out, which I'm really enjoying. A little bit is definitely going a long way. I don't typically like my under eyes to be this bright, but I will be going in with the skin tint after so I can make it a little bit less, a little bit less stark. So around the nose and the areas I might want to brighten. I feel like this blended out so easily though. And it's looking quite nice under the eyes as well. And it doesn't dry down too quickly to the point where you have to do one eye first, which I do appreciate. As always, if you do let it sit for a minute before you blend it out, it will kind of give you a little bit more coverage. I want to see if I can get just a tiny bit more coverage. It's probably because it's too light that I'm not getting exactly what I want, but I do like the little bottle on this as well. That looks really pretty on the skin too. I feel like it's got kind of like a soft radiance to it. Like it, it's not glowy. It's not going to draw a ton of light to the under eye and highlight the area, but it does have a really pretty soft radiance to it. I am noticing a tiny bit of creasing where my eyes crease, but it's really not that bad and it's kind of unnoticeable unless I you know, straighten out those lines. But looking directly at me, it's really not noticeable. I don't think anyone would notice that if they were just speaking to me. I am going to finish the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna use the Danessa Myricks Serum Skin Tint and then I will finish up the rest of my makeup altogether and then I will come back 
to get the wear test started. All right, so the rest of the makeup is on. I like how my makeup looks today. I feel like the skin tint didn't give me as much coverage as maybe I would have liked. Um, it was just one of those days where I needed a little extra, but otherwise, I'm liking how everything looks. I am really, really impressed with this concealer so far. Like I said, I did just put it on, so I still have a whole day to go. I loved how easily it blended out. I love how fast it was to blend, and I loved the finish on the skin. It gave just a really soft luminosity that was not overly shiny, overly glowy, but just gave a really soft, healthy luminosity to the skin. Like I said, shade one is definitely way too light for me, but I did kind of make it work. I don't mind when my under eyes are a little bit brighter, so I don't mind that it is a little too fair. I guess it blended out like a dream. It felt very hydrating. It had that soft luminosity. I did set this under eye with powder and I did not set this one because I noticed that there was a little bit of creasing. It did settle into the lines a little bit, which any product is going to do if you put over the lines, but it wasn't really noticeable creasing. It wasn't like this very noticeable gathering of product. It was only when I would sort of pull the area down a little bit and you could see the product in those lines. So given that it's not a noticeable kind of settling, I am very, very intrigued to see how the unset eye over here is going to fare throughout the day. Typically I would set my concealer, but I am curious if this is one that maybe I don't need to. So I am very curious how this is gonna go so far. I'm really impressed, I'm really happy. I think I would have got a little bit more coverage if I had a darker shade, but so far I'm really, really liking this. I'm gonna go about my day, I'm gonna get to work, I'm gonna do all of the things, and I will do my midday check-in outside so I can show you what this is looking like in natural lighting. And then of course I will wrap up this evening, but let's get into the wear test. All right, so it is currently 3 p.m. The day completely got away from me, but I did wanna step outside and show you how the concealer is looking. So on this side, this is the one that I did not powder and it's still looking pretty good, but a little bit is kind of rubbed off just because I got a hair in my eye and that was a whole drama. But the side that I did powder looks really, really flawless and really pretty and it's still maintaining a lot of the coverage. I would say my chin is still looking pretty good. The area around my nose, I seem to be dealing with a dry patch right here. So I don't really think that is the concealer's fault, but under the eyes, it is still looking really, really nice and I'm really happy with it. So, so far so good. I will see you guys in a few hours to wrap up the wear test. All right, hello. We have made it to the end of the wear test. It is actually five o'clock, but since I started at 6.30, I decided it was okay to wrap this up a little earlier so I can get this video posted. But I so far am quite impressed with the concealer. The side that I powdered is still looking really, really good. I don't have any creasing. It just looks really nice. It hasn't worn off or anything like that. Like I mentioned during my midway check-in, this eye definitely wore down a little bit just because I did get a hair in my eye. But otherwise, it looks pretty good also. I can see the lines where it settled in a bit, but again, it's just, it's really not obvious creasing at all. It just sort of settled into my lines, but not obviously so. Like the Natasha Denona is more obvious about creasing than this new concealer, which is impressive. For reference, the Natasha Denona High Glam is my all-time favorite concealer. This one is just the very best of the best. This is incredibly easy to blend. It's full coverage. It is hydrating, it wears all day long, and it's just the absolute perfect concealer. This one has a lot of similar properties. In terms of consistency, I would honestly compare it much more to the Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer because it's definitely a more thin type of formula, but this does have significantly more coverage than the Makeup Forever. This, much like the Natasha Denona, is a fuller coverage. I would say the Natasha Denona gives a little bit more coverage, however, that could be due to this shade just being a little bit too light. I can make this shade work, but I do wish I would have gotten shade two. However, if this keeps wearing really well, I think I will end up getting another shade, probably shade two, so that I can try it out on the rest of the face because I think I might really like it. In terms of comparisons, this blends out even easier than the Natasha Denona 
and that is one of the key things I love about that concealer is just how quickly and easily it blends right into the skin. This blends out even quicker than that one. So I was really impressed by that. I really like the coverage. I really like the slight radiance it gives without being super glowy. I like that it is very, very minimal when it comes to creasing. This is easily one of the most crease proof concealers I've ever used. Like I always say, there is no such thing as a truly crease proof concealer because if you have lines, product will always settle in those lines. However, there are products that are just really, really subtle about it and this is one of them. This definitely shows signs of creasing less than the Natasha Denona as well. The Natasha gives a little bit more coverage and I would say it is thicker and it does dry down quicker. So this is one that I do kind of need to work a little bit quicker with. This didn't give me that issue, so I really like that as well. I am really excited to keep wearing this. I think so far after today, I really, really like it. It is held up beautifully all day long, and that is on both sides, the, sides, the side that I powdered and the side that I didn't. Both are looking quite nice. Around my nose where I put the concealer, my nose area doesn't look the best, but I feel like I'm dealing with a dry patch. My chin held up beautifully as well. So I am really, really pleased with how this concealer wore today. And I am definitely going to keep wearing this and testing it out. And I will, of course, update you in my month end speed reviews. But so far, this is a hit. I am really, really like it after wearing it today. This has definitely impressed me. So I am really enjoying it so far. Like I said, I do wish I would have gotten shade two. However, this one will work for me. So that being said, this was definitely a successful wear test. I'm really excited to keep wearing this concealer, keep loving it. I don't think the skin tint did me any favors today, which is interesting because I really love that skin tint. That's my favorite in terms of skin tints, but I don't really like how my skin is looking right now, but that has nothing to do with the concealer. That is just the skin tint. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Are you picking this one up? Did you already? Have you tried it? Are there any questions? Maybe I didn't quite answer with this one. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. I love hearing from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.